Hello, this is part two in our series of the No So Junk Journal Bindings. So welcome back to Markets of Sunshine. This is Marcia. Hope you're having a great day. And let me just show you, give you a little catch up here since we just did uh, video one, now we're on video two. So this was the cover. We're using metal rings as our binding. So we're punching holes. We started with a cereal box, so we're going to use a lot of recycled materials in this project. So your junk journal will not have any stitching as far as the binding. Now you could sew embellishments together if you want to do that, but as far as the binding, it's a no-sew binding. So that means not even doing the hand um, Coptic style that, that uh, you see. Um, so this is completely without having to sew it, whether it's by hand or on the machine, it's going to be using these metal rings. Okay, so these you can purchase off of Amazon. I'm not sure, um, I don't think Michaels has them or um, Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure, because I had to purchase mine online. Okay, so this is the back cover, this is the front cover, and this one has a pocket here. I added the embellishments as you see here, vintage laces and trims, buttons. This was often an old earring. So anything that could have a, you know, be an embellishment, just go through your jewelry box, go through your old clothing, any pretty buttons, then you want to take those pretty buttons off and you can save them in your supplies and then you'll have them for future projects. So yesterday I went ahead and I pre-made two more pages for the journal so that we could just move this right along. And let me put this one back on the rings and then I can just keep building. So I was trying to do, I, what did I say? I think I said 24 pages. So to give us a total of 48 because I wanted to compare it to the altered book journal that I did and then it just made that so chunky and, and um, full that you couldn't close the book. What I like about this style is it doesn't matter how many pages you add, you'll always be able to keep it closed without it doing that opening, um, bulky opening thing. And then you can stand it up straight or in a bookcase or lay it flat. So this is another, this was a another cereal box, but it was a thinner material. I put actually scrapbook paper, not cardstock, to cover it, and it's still pretty thick. So from this point on, what I'm going to do is only use straight cardstock and <coughs> fold it in half, or two pieces of scrapbook paper and fold them in half, and then that's going to be our, our pages. So this one can fit in here, right here, and then this one I used um, a geneolo genealogy family tree themed paper and then a music paper. This is just scrapbook paper. And then just a yellow and beach theme. So I'm just going to mix it all up as I go along here. All right, so now what I wanted to do is just add some writing in place here on this. And so I have this little K and Company um, notepad that was a gift to me from a friend um, when I did a swap on Mary Jane Farm. And so I'm just going to go through here and any of these pages that I like that it would look good with what I'm doing and then I'm going to just tear these out and I'm just going to glue them right here and I can come along and I can add other little um, embellishments if I wanted to and I'll show you what I mean in a minute about how you can um, even add you can add layers so let's just go, go follow along with me and then you'll be able to get your supplies out and you can make the same exact thing, embellish it with whatever you have the same exact way. So I'm just going to use a glue stick, cover this really good, 
the corners and the edges. And this is the Scotch brand. It's really nice. So I have my camera and a different tripod <clears throat> right over my desk. Um, I had this one before, but it wasn't. I wasn't liking the angle, the way the videos would turn out when I would upload it. So we'll see how this one works. Because the other one is not being able to get in close enough. This one is much closer. So... I like this angle better, so let's hope that this is going to do good. All right, so I want to keep it in mind, <clears throat> keep it away from the three rings here, so then that allows me to add more embellishing here. And this paper here, I picked it out, but it's, it, it doesn't go with any of this. So, but what I wanted to show you is this is a perfect pocket, and how I did it where I, you can make it expandable by just folding and scoring it in a half an inch, um, which I folded this differently, so when I'll do other ones as we go along, just to show you. So Okay, so this would go in here, and so this side is going to be completely flat, but this side is going to be expandable, so now it makes it much easier to get things in and out of this pocket. Otherwise, it would be glued down really close and tight, and then it's hard. To get things in and out but if you leave one side you could do it both sides but I wanted to wrap this around so I could have put a half an inch gusset here half an inch gusset here and here that would have really given it a, a you know wider pocket but I'm not going to be putting a bunch of things in it that I would needed to, needed to do that and I wanted to have this bottom see how nice that looks and so this is going to go on another page but I had already started going through my stash and saving out um, pretty colors that I wanted to use in, in this one. So I will find something that I can put this with and match it up. Maybe just something creamy, solid color so that this print um, would look really pretty with that. So I just wanted to show you that. And then here's another option. Let me show you on this one. is a corner pocket. So we would be just making a half an inch overlay, put it right on the side, and then when you turn it over you'd have this nice little edge there. This side will be glued, and then this would be your pocket here. So then the little tags would go in and out right there. Okay, so the same thing down here. It could go straight at the bottom, and then just glue it, you know, attach it at the bottom, and then you'd have, uh, you could glue maybe a little part up here, and then you'd have a pocket here and a pocket here that could go across, kind of like a belly band so you could put something straight across so maybe I would just glue it like maybe half an inch at the top and then you've got this whole piece pocket opening so the, just to give you some ideas of how you can do your corner pockets and or a side just a side decorative piece of interest and then the pocket would be here okay so I just wanted to show you those two and now let's just keep going and I'm going to just keep doing the same thing with the papers and gluing them in place. So you just, you're wanting to just build a foundation and get yourself going. So you just want to keep going. You don't need to sit here and complete a page and brainstorm everything. Just get something going so that you have something to build off of. And then as you start building it, and then the get to the little creative juices flowing, and then you're, you can add the, start adding the layers as to what you would like to incorporate on top of this. But this is just a jumping off point to get us going. So you can use the print paper and then you come on top with a solid writing space paper. So this is how I like to do it. So if you want to use up a lot of your pattern paper, this is a great way to do it. And then you just come on top of that and layer it with some solid. And now uses up what you have in your stash 
All right, so I want to keep this one. I'm going to keep it here. I'll show you what we're going to do here to add more writing spots. Okay, so the, this little notepad, I'm just going to use it up on this paper here. And then I'm going to show you another page we're going to do. I just want to decorate these right now. And show you how to add another page in. And I was wanting to get your feedback on my picture that I have listed for, um, I'm doing some new um, image pictures that describe the video. And if you've noticed, I have a new um, background, which is a sunburst, and then my wording is like a retro. So because my channel is very vintage retro theme, I love the country vintage retro. So I wanted to um, convey that. And so I just wanted to know, did you notice it? <laughs> and what was it that uh, intrigued you to click on my video? So I would like to know that. Is it the title? Or is that that is it the image and the title? Is it a combination of the two? Is it just the image? Is it just the title? So that would help me out a lot if you could let me know that in the comments below. Okay, so there's that already quick and easy. Now we can move on to the next one. Just lay this to the side because I will be adding more to that. And now here I want to just come in and add again some solid paper, and I have some actual uh, writing tablet. So I'm going to come through, pick up some of this. And I wanted to mention our Facebook group, Junk Journal Junction. So if you're interested in add a little something that was on there. That's our Facebook group with Linda Coker and I, and we're collaborators together, and we help promote each other. My Etsy shops are Markets of Sunshine and Pioneer Fundraiser. I'm now, we've made the 300 mark, so now we're heading to 400 <clears throat> subscribers. So this is actually a four now. So if you would like to share the videos and my channel, that would really help me if you would post on your social media and that helps me to get found and will help us to reach the 400 subscribers. So thank you so much to everyone who's already doing that. I really appreciate it. So this is just a children's writing tablet. I, I think I did pick this up at um, Michael's as well in the children's department. So if you go over to the children's craft department, Not easy to tear the paper out. So it just gives you different, um, yes, okay. Doodle paper pad, 60 sheets. Little Fingers is the brand, but I know I, I got this in the children's section at Michael's when I buy the art paper, the children's art paper that I use. I tell you about that as well. Okay, so here we go. And now what I'm going to do with this is just use my decorative scissors. This is a Fiskar brand and this is the Majestic is the style. All right, so, oh, and I had a, a family tree one in here I wanted to use on that other page. Where was that? Family recipes. Okay, let's see. This one was cute. <clears throat> All right, so this I want to use over here. So I can 
cover it right here and put it right there. And then family gatherings usually look like, so these are both family themes, so they'll go there. Deciding how big I want it to be. I don't know if people really use these scissors a lot anymore. We used to use them a lot with scrapbooking. But I don't see a lot of the ladies on the junk journal pages that much using these. I see them use those metal rulers and some of those have a little bit of a decorative edge. So, but I still have a lot in my stash and I still use them. Okay, so how far, let's see here. Okay, I want this to be straight. Okay, I like that. That's good. Perfectly good. And again, just use up what you have already. So this is what I have. So I'm not going to buy anything. Do this journal, and I'm going to go through my stash and use everything up. So this year, I am really working hard to just use up the stash. <clears throat> and what better thing to do because, you know, we buy it and it's bought to be used. And I must say I have more than enough. <laughs> I could share, share, share. And I do. Okay, let's start down here. This paper is so soft. Very nice. See, isn't that pretty? Just adds that extra link. And I could come in here and put a little bit of the inking around the edge. So that's really fun. Okay, so let me show you. This would be a perfect piece to show you. It's not not long enough, but it will do for what I want to show. Okay, so you could take this, and you really wouldn't even have to fold that. But you could take it like this and put a piece of piece of washi tape here and then which I would I would want to fold that and now you just lift it up so now you have a page here this would fold over you'd have a writing place here and right place there just to make something pretty but just to give you more interest so of course I'll I would use something prettier than the, just this to cover these up but that's what we're going to do so we're going to take it fold it Maybe fold it like this. Yeah, fold it like that to get a little bit of a crease. Put your washi tape, and then you've got all that extra place for writing. So that's what we're going to do. So keep that in mind. Okay, so now let's take these two. <clears throat> and you can pick up these little notepads like this with, uh, you know, line already lined uh, spots on it, lined paper for writing. Decorative, K and Company makes them. So there's lots of, of these available already. Instantly changes the whole feel of the page with just starting to add layers that you can use. Okay, and I'm going to cover this up here. So that's, look at how nice that is. Just that simple to do. It's not difficult to do at all. And then also I'll come back here and I'll take another section of this and I'll cut it. will be making a tassel 
for the outside of the journal. So stay tuned for that. That will be our finale to the series. Really doesn't matter which side I'd lose. So it's the same front and back. And this paper, because it's so thin, it doesn't uh, require a lot of glue. That's why the glue stick is perfect. But if you only had liquid tacky glue, then you could use that and then use a paintbrush and thin out so you don't get the glob, you know. So thank you to everyone who's following along. Tilly, I really appreciate you leaving me that nice comment and to all of my other wonderful followers, subscribers, thank you very much. Okay, so there's that page. Now I can move on. So this is what I want to do first. I just want to come through, let's get, you know, pages where we have a, you know, start to it get a feel of what we want to do and then you can keep building your pages. Okay, so now I'll have the two cereal boxes for the cover, the cereal boxes for here, and then now um, I, what I'm thinking I'm going to do this once this is closed up, then these will be maybe the two in the center and then I'll fill, fill them in here with um, just regular cardstock pages and scrapbook paper or something like that. So we'll see how, that's, that's what I've got thinking right now, but we'll see how it goes along. All right, so let me show you today now. Let's get right into embellishing and probably gonna need the tacky glue for this next part. All right, let's try to get all that out of the way. Okay, so here what I'm saving, okay. Now this, the covers to your paper pads, your 12 by 12 paper pads, save those. Now this is the back cover, so it has this beautiful white front and back, and it's perfect. This is absolutely perfect to be used, just like I did for the cover, just as one page. So cut it down to your size uh, that you would want. I could do the 5 by 8 that's the cover, or I can go a little bit smaller like four and a half by seven, you know, something like that. As long as it fits in the three rings. So I would probably use this now, this size as my guide. So I could cut this and then have it just come out here. So this would be a single page. And then what I'll do is cover this with scrapbook paper or cardstock. So you see, but it's just a single page because it wants, if you start folding these again, they really get too thick and bulky. So I don't, I don't like that. All right, now here are two papers that I've picked out of my stash. <clears throat> I'm going to go through and start matching up what I have in my stash to make the next journals because I'll start off with something and then it's like, guess what? You only have <laughs> those two in the whole supplies because I don't have a lot of paper anymore that's big pieces. They're smaller cut off from the when I make my wallets. So I have the seven, 12 by 12, I cut down seven inches off. That leaves me five by 12. So I have a lot, a ton of five by 12. So I may start making the, my next journal size will be five by 12. So, well, not 12, but five by seven or eight. We'll go, we'll go with that as again. So, okie dokie. So here's the two I have. And I said, okay, I'm just gonna make them work. And so what I wanted to do was take these and fold them this way, glue it together. I could sew it, but I want to just glue right now, just to show you. And then cut it down five by eight, and then put it in the journal. So this will be a page front and back to decorate, and then the same thing with this. Okay. So let me see if that is going to work. So if I, okay, so obviously when I fold it in half, it's going to be six inches. 
Um, but that's going to be fine. Okay, so that's actually wide enough already. And then the length. Okay, perfect. It'll work. Okay, so I'm going to just take it here. I'm going to go ahead and fold it. And then I can put it through the guillotine cutter and then cut the, the length off. And since this, is, this was the top where it was in the paper pack and it has that little perforation edge I don't like, so I'm going to cut it on that end. Close those up before I cut myself. All right, let's get the cutter over here. And put all these things out of the way. I love that everything is right here handy in my room. I don't have to go far. And you should be really up close seeing everything. I love it. I hope the camera angle comes out because I'll be very upset if it doesn't. Okay, so let's take this one off. I can get to the back cover. All right, let go of that. Okay, so put this up against the edge. Bring it down here. All right, so I'm going to go a little shorter. All right. Doubling the paper over, it doesn't slide as easily as I thought it was going to. Okay. more. Okay. Okay. Now laying it up against here. Okay, it looks pretty good. So once I punch the holes, and I will punch the holes here on the crease, which will allow me, which even though I'm going to glue this together, but still, or I might leave it like this. I don't know. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Decisions, decisions. Uh, let me think about it. This could be perfect for another page in a smaller journal, but not this particular one. This particular cutter is Crafter's Companion, so I use the edge of the guillotine blade as where I know that I need to cut. Okay. Okay. Just that easy. Okay, so now what we do is we use our page and we put it, line it up, and we get a pin and we come in here and make the hole. And we come with the hole punch. And I use the 3 16th size. And I keep the handle on the desk tabletop so that it holds it steady for me. My hands tend to want to move. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with this.
since this, well, this is, uh, trying to feel it. If it's, this is, is this more, I think this is considered more card stock. Not as heavy duty as some, but it's definitely not paper. Okay, now let's bring the little binder over. This one is really like, is it even the same size? Maybe I got one that's too small. And this one, like this is hard to close. This one's not too bad, but this one is just like the spring is like shot on it. Let me get a different one. <clears throat> Let me see. went with the which size did I go with okay let me see one and a half or two inch let's see mm. yes yeah, okay this one let's see all right yeah this is a little bit more I don't like that one that's too loose it's too floppy Okay, go through that one, go through that one, go through that one. Okay, there we go. Now, all right. And then what's the beauty of this as well versus the type that you sew is you can move your pages around with this. You can't move it once you sew it into the other journal. It's there for keeps. Alright, so now, y'all see, I like that already. So this is going to come, okay, so here's the back cover. Put it back on. Okay. Yep, well, I like that. Alright, so I, okay. Okay, put this one back here. On the next one, I'm not going to use cereal boxes for the center pages. I will just use it for the cover. Okay. And in fact, I mean, I could make these covers for other journals. I might just do that. Okay, so this one will go here. This one will go here. So very simple, very, very quick and easy. I'm not going to close them because they're too hard for me to open back up. All right, so, but you get the idea. So now we will put something here for writing. Same thing with this here front. And I'll come in here and I can decorate it however I want to as well. So this is just actually perfectly moving right along. So already I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten pages right here that are already in the journal. So this is pretty good. I like that. So now we just need 14 more. <laughs> so stay tuned for the next video, part three, and we'll come back in put some different uh, embellishments on these pages, look through all of our ephemera, and see what we have. But now, just with these cute little things, I mean, look at how cute those are. Just adds that nice bit of interest right away. <clears throat> Same over here, I like this, I like these, this here, just perfect. And of course, the cover. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. Okay, and I already have a tag going on over here off of the ring. So you got to have all your little cute little doodads and embellishments. So those are, those are a must when you're doing your journals. So page tabs. We still have page tabs to do. More pockets. We'll come in with more pockets. But I want to get the writing spots um, addressed first. So we have that. So there's plenty of 
places in here for writing. And then so we'll do pockets with tuck spots, page tabs, <clears throat> the tassel, which will be the finale. Um, maybe some hidden cascade pages. We'll do a few cascade pages, waterfall pages, and um, what other styles do we have? Um, the expandable. Oh, you know what? Maybe one of the expandables could come in here. Oh, that would be perfect. Yes. Okay, here you go. So one of the expandable pockets that we made. Look at that. Perfect now. It can go in here because before it was going to be too bulky and my other one I wasn't able to use it. And look at this. I like it already right here with these colors. Or I could open it up and put it in here. But I like it here. Okay, I don't know why, but I just like it there. There, no, but here. <laughs> this, it is, immediately, it just seems like, yes, I love it. It says, put me here. I like it here. All right, so he will go here. So expandable pocket. So if you want to see how to make an expandable pocket, um, go back and I'll link that so that you can watch this video. We made these together. So now this takes care of that page. Just that quick and easy. I love it. Oh yes, and one of my junk mail envelope pockets. We have to put one of those in here. So that's got that's another must. I put one of those in every journal that I do now. So let's see where would it go? Maybe on here, even though this is very busy, but that's okay. I will figure out how to tone down the pocket so that it would look good against this busyness because I like this on this already. I mean, that looks really nice there. So very good. Okay. Thank you again for being here with me. Please, if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, the little bell and like, comment, share all those good things. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great and sunshiny day. Thanks for being here and creating in the sunshine with me. Bye-bye.